Hi, I'm Todd with Terra Onion. We'd like to welcome you today to the Terra Onion FPGA Direct for Spring 2021. Before we get to the big announcement, let's go ahead and dive into a few updates on existing products. Let's start out talking about Mode, the multi-optical disc emulator. We released Mode about one year ago with support for both the Sega Saturn and Sega Dreamcast consoles. To say that the Mode launch was a massive success would be an understatement. Rave reviews started coming in almost immediately after shipments began. Customers enjoy the easy to use interface, the disc image compatibility, and performance of Mode. In the fall of last year, we added PlayStation support as the third console that Mode supported, making a total of three supported consoles with Dreamcast, Saturn, and PlayStation. Today, we are releasing firmware 1.05, and it includes a host of updates and bug fixes, including support for sending Game ID to Memory Card Pro and PS1 Digital for the PlayStation, oversized disc images for translation patches on the Saturn, and plenty of other tweaks and improvements. So head over to the download section and download it today. Moving on to the Neo SD Pro, we opened up pre-orders for both the MVS and AES carts just a few months ago. We're happy to report that as of right now, we have shipped all of the MVS and AES pre-orders, so there's no more that's in back order. Now let's talk about the Super SD System 3. We released firmware 1.03 just before Christmas and it was a massive update. A refreshed interface ported over from the Mega SD with new font, directory caching, seek time emulation, per game bio support, and plenty of other tweaks and refinements. Today we are releasing firmware version 1.04. This firmware is mostly a bug fix update that addresses some regressions in the previous release. You can grab it from the download section as well. And speaking of the Super SD System 3, we have another announcement about it. We are sad to say that at this time we do not have any plans to produce another batch of them. Whoa, 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 hey, 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 no, I said we didn't plan to produce any more batches of it. I didn't say that it was dead. Today, we are happy to announce the Super HD System 3 Pro. It builds on top of the foundation of the original SSDS3 with many, many improvements, additions, and quality of life changes, all with completely new hardware created from scratch. Let's take a closer look at the hardware as it shares very little in common with its older counterpart. First up, let's talk about the HD portion. We've added native onboard HDMI output. You can select between multiple 480p and 720p video options. The PC Engine natively outputs a type of digital video signal on its expansion bus, and we've pulled the signal, routed it into the FPGA along with analog audio, and built our HDMI output from that. The beauty of doing it this way means that there is zero analog video noise and no gel bars at all. We've kept analog RGB output as many people will want to use a CRT display or take advantage of high-end video scalers for 1080p, 1440p, and beyond display options. The RGB circuit is all new and it's derived from the digital signal going into the FPGA, which means that it too is completely free of any gel bars, and the RGB levels have been verified by the oscilloscope to meet NTSC video standards. The quality of the analog RGB output from the Super HD System 3 Pro is heads and shoulders above existing options. We have upgraded the FPGA, and it's five times more powerful than the one featured in the original SSDS3 so it can fit many more features like HDMI, higher resolution data display, and so on. Also, we increased the available RAM, adding one megabyte of very fast SRAM. It's currently being used as a frame buffer for the HDMI output, but it's available for future FPGA needs as well. A couple of other new additions to the Pro model is a micro USB port and physical push button on the rear. The micro USB port is reserved for developers and future usage. The push button is for a physical in-game trigger. Press once and the game resets, just as if you'd press select plus run on the gamepad. Hold it down for three seconds and it returns you back to the menu system. And thanks to the new FPGA, we've also reworked the software in-game trigger from the gamepad as well. When enabled, if you hold down select plus run for a couple seconds, it will send you back to the menu. The in-game trigger is now a reliable option to keep enabled. Although it obviously wasn't ready in time for this video, the Super HD System 3 Pro will receive a case facelift. The new shell will be a light semi-transparent blue color rather than a smoky gray. It should look really sharp and stand out. So let's go over some of the hardware upgrades of the Super HD System 3 Pro. You have both 480p and 720p HDMI created from digital video on the expansion bus, gel bar free RGB output from the same digital video, a far, far more powerful FPGA, a micro USB port reserved for developer and future usage, a physical switch for in-game trigger, and an updated case with a new transparent blue color. We've talked about some of the hardware improvements, but let's talk about the software side as there are some equally big changes there too. We've implemented one of the most frequently requested additions to the new Pro model. We've added Super Graphics game support to regular PC Engine models. For Super Graphics support, we are leveraging as much of the original hardware in the PC Engine as possible for accuracy, 
and only simulating the few unique hardware components present in the Super Graphics console. So for the first time, owners of original PCE consoles can play that handful of Super Graphics games without needing to shell out big dollars for the original hardware. While video is very important, audio is an equally important factor. We've gone ahead and rebalanced the CD and Hue card audio using the fantastic MD Fourier tool provided by Artemio. We've matched up the audio levels with that of a white PC engine with IFU and CD-ROM 2, so you should find that the audio mix levels are on par with original hardware. Of course, with new hardware means an all-new interface. Our brand new interface was created by graphics artist and game developer Dugan Jackson of TikiPod Limited. If you're into games for newer systems, check out his latest game, Astro Aqua Kitty. Our new interface is really fantastic, and it fits really well with a brand new logo that was created by Alien PDX for us. And if you dive into the options menu, you can even find a user interface theme entry with multiple color schemes for you to choose from. You might have noticed in the options menu that the top entry was for game list type. It's defaulted to list view. We've added an incredible cover view option just like on mode. The new interface, even in cover view, is really, really fast. Scrolling down through a folder full of games, the cover art loads almost immediately. This is all drawn by the FPGA, so it looks a lot better than what the limited color and resolution options of the PC Engine would normally be like. Back into the options menu, I want to point out another significant software upgrade of the original SSDS3. You now have the option to load custom palettes for both the digital and analog outputs. Without anything additionally added, you can select from the default, which is the same palette as you see on an RGB modded PC Engine, and composite, which is the same color palette that you see over composite video. Let me show you the difference between the two in a game. Ultimately, this is a personal preference and up to you to decide which is right for you. One more option I'd like to talk about is the new scan lines feature. We have both adaptive and fixed scan lines and you can adjust the intensity or brightness of them. So if you prefer a CRT-like look but on a modern LCD, give this a try. There are plenty of other under the hood improvements such as arcade card support being rebuilt from the ground up for the new FPGA and miscellaneous bug fixes and other refinements. The Super HD System 3 Pro with its new more powerful FPGA affords us a new opportunity with our devices. We will now officially be providing documentation and resources to port other cores to the Super HD System 3 Pro, expanding its capabilities beyond its target console. Loading external FPGA cores is as easy as dragging and dropping the cores to the micro SD card. Super HD System 3 Pro will detect all available cores in the sys folder and will enable loading games from other systems. To highlight the experience, here's a sneak peek of the 8-bit Nintendo FPGA core that we've been working on. This core is a port from Ludwig Strigovis's NES FPGA core and will be available at launch day for a download. Complete source code of the port will be available too at our GitHub so others will be able to make changes, synthesize it, and load it directly from the SD card. This port can be used as an example by developers to port other FPGA cores to the Super HD System 3 Pro. Relive those which is better arguments of your childhood all on one device as new open source cores are ported to work on it. And let's go over some of the software upgrades of the Super HD System 3 Pro. We've added Super Graphics game support for all PC Engine models. The CD and Hue card audio levels have been completely rebalanced with the MD Fourier tool. An all new interface by graphic artist Dugan. And we also have a cover view artwork interface option that's just like a mode. You can load custom palettes for both HDMI and analog RGB outputs. And finally, you can load open source cores from the SD card. The price for the Super HD System 3 Pro is 255 euros, which includes worldwide shipping via DHL. All the parts are already at the factory and production begins the first week of July, and we estimate shipments to customers will begin later in the month. As most everyone is aware, parts shortages and component prices have made production difficult for everyone in manufacturing electronics. This means a second batch of Super HD System 3 Pros will unfortunately have to rise by 30 euros. We were able to keep the cost on this first batch of units lower since we bought the parts back in January of this year at 2020 like prices. Rising parts costs and scarce availability have even caused a price increase of mode and mega SD. Once the shortages end, which we expect will happen next year, we will lower prices back down. Well, I think that about wraps it up for this Direct. If you're interested in purchasing a Super HD System 3 Pro, you can go to shop.terraonion.com right now and you can purchase one. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next Direct.